On this week's Growing, Eating, and Educating, Nambot Farm Director Andrea Bushery shows us how to transplant our winter kale. The farm is busy converting all of the high tunnels into the winter crops so that they get a head start in the growing process before the winter months, which we know last a while here, <laughs> and they really hit us here in northern Michigan, so it's good to get that head start on that. Let's head out to Nambop Farm and get our hands dirty. Hey guys, welcome back to Growing, Eating, and Educating. I'm your farm director, Andrea Bushry. Today we're in our high tunnel talking about how to transplant our winter kale. So we're starting to transplant now and convert all of our tunnels into our winter crops so that we get enough growth on them before the winter months hit when there's not enough light to actually keep the plants growing. The kind of kale that we're planting this year in the winter is our red Russian kale. So this is a little bit more of a sweeter, kind of mild flavor of a kale. So your normal summer kales are usually a lot more bitter. Their plants are also a lot more condensed, which is why I like planting these. They get a little bit more tall and they have a lot more airflow in their plant structure. And the reason I like that is because in the winter, we don't have a lot of airflow in these tunnels because they're all closed up to keep everything warm. And so that means we're more susceptible to different mildews and things like that. So I like this one because it can handle that a little bit better. So the more airflow that we have, the less uh, possibility that we'll have of mildew. When you take your plant out of its packaging, you wanna make sure that you're squeezing the cell a little bit so that you kind of break up the roots a little bit. And then I like to tip it just slightly and start to work that thing out. If you just pull it, you're gonna pull the plant out and then the roots will stay in the soil block. So you wanna make sure that you're kind of massaging the roots out of its cell. Uh, we plant this kale in 12 inch spacing. Uh, the recommendation is from 12 to 18 because we're in a high tunnel and we need to conserve as much space as possible. We do a little bit of a diamond pattern in our planting. So our middle row will be at a foot mark and then our outside rows are at six inch marks so that we're keeping a diamond and that makes it so that we have more airflow throughout the rows. So when we plant these, we just wanna dig a hole large enough that we can plant it all the way up to the surface level of this cell. So then we're just gonna stick it in a little bit and then move the dirt around it. And the idea is that we don't wanna cover up the center of our transplant because otherwise we're cutting off the growth point of our plant. So we wanna make sure that we're just at the surface level of the cell. Once you finish planting your bed, the next thing to do is put drip irrigation on it. So we're almost done with this. We're gonna put our drip irrigation on and run it for about an hour or so. The other thing to make sure you're doing before you start transplanting is you wanna make sure you water those plants in really heavily before you put them into the ground. Uh, what happens a lot of time is if you put your transplants in a dry bed, the soil will actually pull all the moisture out of your transplant cell, and then your plants will actually wilt pretty immediately. So you wanna make sure that you soak them really well before you actually plant them to avoid that from happening. For more at Nambot Farm, check us on 9 and 10 News. Thanks, bye.